look where we are. If you are new here, this used to be my workplace. I was thinking about it and I've worked at this bookstore on and off for four years. The owners opened in uh, August 2020 and I started working here in September 2020. That was around, did I start booktube 2020 or 2021? I forget. But anyways, this is kind of like the birthplace of the booktube idea <laughs> because I, yeah, would just watch a lot of book reviews and I was just really immersed in, in, in books and selling them. So I thought, why don't I just start filming myself? <laughs> so I think I mentioned already, but I'm not working in like a full-time capacity at all. It's just that the owner was going on vacation as they do every summer. And they were just like, Iggy, is there a possibility that you can fill in certain dates or work certain events? And I was like, absolutely. I may have a nine to five, but I can do it all. <laughs> so that's why I'm here. It's going to be a really exciting weekend. I'm just so happy to be in the space. It's just radiating with good energy in here always. And yeah, it's just such a privilege to be back, even if it's just for a short little while. I have a few shifts sprinkled here and there. Uh, over the next few months. So I don't think this is going to be the last time that you'll see this space, but yeah, for those of you that have been following me for a while, you'll recognize it and maybe feel just as like nostalgic and excited to see it again. So yeah, um, I got in quite a bit earlier just because I, there's certain things that have changed a little bit. So I just wanted to familiarize myself before people start coming in and whatnot. So yeah, also I wanted to do a little tour because certain things have changed as I can already tell. So I thought we could just peruse the store uh, together. So yeah, um, what else? Um, oh, I wanted to show you my skirt, which I think I'm gonna have to walk all the way here, but I love her. She's very long actually. Um, and I feel like I look like a little school teacher, <laughs> but yeah, it's got this cute little detail here. I'm wearing it with very colorful shoes and my little purple top because I love purple and it's actually quite chilly. So I'm glad I brought a little sweater. Oh well, yeah, let's look around and see what's new and what's remained somewhat the same. So we've got our new and notable. Want to get to this that I've got that um, Eva's reading it at the moment. I've heard incredible things about this, obviously. Um, I also want to get to this at some point. What else have we got? Mm, staff picks. So happy somebody picked this. I've also heard really good things about this. Uh, I think Ben read this recently or semi-recently and really loved. Mm, Martyr, Tammy's Reco that I also have on my list. And then we've got, and then we've got Tales of Discovery, Love, and Joy, Read Queer All Year. True. I just got Coexistence and I'm ah, so excited. Um, yeah, what else? Oh, I went to see the book launch of this. Cannot wait to read this, how it works. I also worked this event. Um... Love her, my queen. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, we've got our little subscription service where people come and see what little offerings we've left. I shouldn't say we anymore. This is not it's not my my thing anymore. But yeah, the store is just looking so beautiful. I've talked about this before, but okay. Sorry, I thought this would be a better angle. I've talked about this before, but the bookstore is organized uh by like interesting title or sorry interesting category so we've got eco lit dystopia not of this world mind care planet and politics flora and fauna riveting lives erotica observations philosophy where to Anyways, it's, I just have always really appreciated the way that the owner comes up with these creative uh, groupings. So books on books, justice, 
indigenous truths. My two favorite sections, I will show you, <laughs> is uh, literary magic for obvious reasons. Um, and then the other section I really like is being human. So yeah, we've got popcorn reads, lit historical, sweeping stories, and then we've got a huge section of found in translation. So I'm just looking through our emails, making sure I'm not like missing any orders because that's typically what I would do in the morning is just seeing what online orders or special orders um, that we've received. So anyways, I'm doing that. But instead, I got greeted with this super sweet email, which I completely resonate with. And it's just illustrative of how important and special like independent bookstores are. But this person goes, hello, I just wanted to say that I really appreciate your bookstore. I always find something I haven't heard about. Today, it was My Life with Sea Turtles by Christy Finnegar, no clue, and Kudos by Rachel Cusk, which I do know. I imagine it is a huge task to figure out which books to carry. Independent bookstores are far and few and far between in Vancouver, sadly, and so I greatly appreciate the name of this bookstore. Very friendly staff too. Take care, and then it's the, the person's name, but so freaking sweet. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It just like warms my heart that we collectively share the same sentiment of just how important these spaces are, especially because in Vancouver, but I also think just in the world at large, um, they're few and far between, like they say. So yeah, it's just really nice to show gratitude and appreciation for our local community and our local vendors. And uh, it's just a nice reminder to send kind messages like this if you don't say it like verbally when you're like in the space and interacting with um, the staff or whatever. It's just really nice to hear. <laughs> and like, obviously it's not like I work here permanently or that like I own this place or anything like that, but just reading that as somebody who, so being like on their side as in like going into spaces myself and just really appreciating how much care has gone into the curated selection and uh, just appreciating and admiring the space. So I always love to go to independent bookstores when I go travel as well as just support the local ones in, in Vancouver. So yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to share that because uh, I wanted to continue to expand the love <laughs> of indie bookstores and the important role that they play in community, in being a just really special place to come together, to be introduced to new authors, new voices, new stories, and all of it just being so important, you know? So anyway, thank you, sweet customer. I'm gonna now reply and continue on my day, but yeah, I just wanted to share that.
it is a new day and I feel like I didn't even finish the clip from yesterday. <laughs> I think somebody walked in or something or maybe I did finish it, but anyway, it was a really busy day. I was not expecting to A, get as many books delivered, which I still have to, I came in early today because I didn't get through two boxes and it just gets kind of chaotic to uh, put the books, the new books in the shelf when there's like a million people in this small space. So anyway, yeah, that happened. And then I also wasn't expecting as many people to come because it was a really rainy like fall day. So I assumed that, yeah, we just wouldn't have as much foot traffic and I was wrong. So yeah, it was very eventful, very busy. Uh, and then after, uh, like at 5.30, I started to help my coworker set up for the Billy Ray Belcourt event and I got to talk to him. <laughs> I finally got over my fear. I feel like uh, you've been listening to me speak about how intimidate, intimidating I thought he was for a long time. Then I went to his talk about coexistence. Where is it? Coexistence, his new uh, short story collection, which is beautiful, by the way. Um, I saw him at Emily Carr for that talk, and he was just so like soft-spoken and had just such a lovely presence once he actually like opened his mouth and started to speak, and I could like feel his demeanor, something that I, like at the bookstore, he just like came, bought his books and left. So I was just intimidated for some reason. Anyway, all that to say, I feel like you've been through the saga with me. And yesterday we finally, had, <laughs> we finally had a one-on-one -on -one, and I was this close to being like, um, do you think you could like say hello to my friends on the internet? And I chickened out. So I am really sorry, but I did think of you. I was just too nervous and I couldn't do it. So I apologize. Um, despite my extroverted exterior, I actually am a bit introverted. Actually, I think I am introverted. I always, I always say I'm introverted and people are like, no, you aren't. But I do like being alone for the most part. Like I would pick being alone over being with people. Well, I mean, it depends who, but for most people I'd pick being alone. <laughs> anyway, um, so today, what's on the agenda? We are, yeah, I'm gonna um, unbox two big book orders that I just didn't get a chance to do yesterday. Um, I think I might have to take some pictures for their Instagram. And I'm also gonna do a bit of work for my nine to five because I have like a meeting next week that I just wanna prep for if it's quiet. And then I'm actually going to the Sunshine Coast where I grew up later today because it's a long weekend to visit my friend Delphine. Uh, she just moved up there and that should be really delightful. It's the Sunshine Coast in the summer is like, oh, it truly is a Sunshine Coast. Um, anyway, yeah. I, I, oh, I did want to share, but I actually packed it in my little carry-on and it's not easily accessible, but I'm bringing three books on this three day journey. So I don't know who I am, but anyway, I'm bringing a Noam Chomsky one that I'll put a picture of it here that I bought ages ago, but I just wanted a nonfiction companion. Then I'm bringing the leopard skin hat that I started at work a few days ago, like I mentioned, and I really have been enjoying that. And then I also decided to bring coexistence because I thought that like some short stories would be lovely uh, on the coast. Like I can just picture myself at the beach and just like picking it up to read a little story and then going frolicking in the water and like hanging out with Delphine and her lovely partner. So yeah, that's what I'm bringing on this little journey with me as in like reading material. As for clothes, it's literally just sweatpants and bathing suits because <laughs> that's all we're going to be doing like lounging and or going to the beach or lake. So yeah, um, there's kind of an attractive man. No, just kidding. <laughs> like, I don't even know where I'm going to find another boyfriend because all I do is like read, go to sleep at 930, work, which doesn't involve, like, I'm just here a few days um, of the summer. Like, I don't work here full time, as you guys know. So I guess I could potentially meet somebody on the sh on a shift at the bookstore, but that's that's about it. Anyways, oh my God, what a random... I need to shut up and get to work. So we'll check back in in a few.
Good morning. I don't know why I say good morning every time. Like, you could be watching this at 2 a.m. for all I know. <laughs> anyway, I am at the bookstore today a little bit early. It's like 9 a.m. and we open at 10.30. But I have to ship some things out. I also kind of wanted to work on my, like, 9 to 5 stuff as well and talk to you. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, I've mentioned this already, but I'm here helping my boss out um, a few days this summer. It's not permanent. I do now have a law job. <laughs> but I will take all the shifts I can get in this space because it's just such a joy, not only, yeah, to be here, but meeting people and interacting with strangers, really, because that's what they are. <laughs> but there's a time in which our lives come together and we have a nice chat about books or people just start like oversharing. Uh, like yesterday, this old lady came in at 5.30 and like that's when we close. And she just really wanted to talk about the Alice Monroe news that uh, was exposed the other day. And yeah, she just wanted to talk for like 20 minutes about this. So all that to say that I feel like I say that I'm an introvert, but I do really love some human interaction. <laughs> so I guess I'm like a introverted extrovert, whatever. Anyway, does not matter. Let's talk about what I have been reading lately. So I finished the Cookie Mueller book, Walking on a Pool Painted Black or something like that. Book of vignettes about her life as well as her column where she was like Dr. Mueller and people would write her questions and she would answer them. And then another section is her fiction. So like short stories. And I deeply, deeply enjoyed myself. I had read a couple of her little vignettes like a year and a bit ago, maybe two years now when I first bought the book, but it wasn't the right time or place. Like I just didn't really get into it. And this time around, I gobbled it up. She's so sincere. She's so like funny. Her life felt really genuine, chaotic, sad, and really fun for me to read. There's a sincerity in her writing that was really apparent to me and made the stories a joy to read. Like I felt, and I was talking to Pato about this, but I feel like with Eve Babbitt's, like a lot of her, cause she's like another like, it girl from kind of the same time, I believe. No, maybe Eve is a bit younger than, or maybe Cookie's a bit younger than uh, Eve Babbitt. But anyways, um, but some of Eve's stories, like I just kind of roll my eyes because it's just like, are you making some of this up? <laughs> like, I don't know. It just, it just, sometimes Eve doesn't hit. Whereas Cookie's stories, while some of them were like so absurd it still like worked like there was no part of me that was like cringing or rolling my eyes if that makes sense so all of that to say there was like a, a an air of sincerity and like grittiness and rawness and in, in those stories that really like stuck with me and I've been thinking about a lot of those stories since reading it and I finished it like a week and a half ago so or no maybe a few days ago I don't know I have no concept of time anymore Anyways, so that was a really enjoyable read. I highly recommend it. Very interesting character. I would have wanted to know more about her and her son's dynamic as well as like her recovery. And I just wanted more, really. I think that's, that's, <laughs> that's my, my takeaways. I found her so intriguing. I guess I shouldn't say the character of Kiki Miller because like she was a real person. Uh, but yeah, I understand the cookie lore, you know? Hey, hello. 
Apologies for the erratic end to the last clip. I got a phone call from my girlfriends. I think I mentioned this already, but at the end of August, I'm going to Mexico, to Mexico City, Oaxaca, and Puerto Escondido with um, my friends from university. So if you have any recommendations actually for any of those places, please let me know. I've been to all of them before, but I can never have too many wrecks. Anyway, so they called to do like trip planning and so that I obviously stopped filming. And then that last day at the bookstore was so freaking busy that I just like never turned on the camera again. And now it's been a couple weeks. So here we are. I also wanted to say that I met one of you. I forget your name. I'm really sorry. I'm so bad with names, but I'm really good with face recognition. Anyway, and they just happened to come into the store when I was working and it was just really delightful to meet you and yeah, just meeting people in general through booktube has been so wonderful. Like I'm gonna go see Colleen uh, tomorrow. I'll link her channel downstairs and that was purely out of booktube. Anyways, all, <laughs> all of that to say, apologies for how that ended. And now I've just like accumulated a lot of things that I have read and acquired recently that I wanted to share. So I'm gonna try and not be like super rambly, but that's not really my strong suit. But anyway. So let's start. I already talked about the Cookie Mueller book that I thoroughly enjoyed and already. Um, and that sort of led me to want to continue to read kind of like short story and like vignettes. So I read Coexistence. It was so good. Oh my God. This book has like my entire heart. I mean, it was just so freaking beautiful. And I think that part of the reading experience was like imbued with Billy Ray Belcourt's like beautiful essence because I talked about this already, but I met him or sorry, I went to a talk a couple of months ago where I heard him speak um, for the first time. And it was just so beautiful. The whole event was just like so beautiful and lovely to hear him speak about his work and just like his person. And then a couple weeks ago, he had an event at the bookstore I worked at. So I had no alternative but to finally introduce myself to him after like, I don't know, years of him coming into the bookstore and me just like being a shy girl and never having the courage to be like, I love you and I know exactly who you are. Uh, so anyways, all that to say that because of these two experiences with him as of late, uh, I don't know, I just like think of him as the individual who put all these like sentiments and ideas and characters into onto the page that was just so compelling and beautiful to read. So anyway, yeah, this is his latest short story collection. Also, thank you Penguin Random House Canada for sending this to me, God bless. Um, Anyway, so yeah, it's a short story collection, but we are in reintroduced to some of the characters in, in subsequent stories, which is really nice because there's kind of like a nice like through line, I suppose. But yeah, I mean, I think this has to be my favorite work of Billy Ray Belcourt's, to be honest. Like it just, he did not miss. Like they were all bangers. You know, sometimes when you read short stories or even just essays, like some are better than others. Like no, every single one was so good so tender he writes about like human relationships like so beautifully whether it's like mother son whether it's a queer relationship whether it's like professor and student like anything just people relating in like intimate ways whether it's romantic or not like he's just a master at it just so beautiful i mean he writes about longing romance uh family, colonialism too. All of these stories are like imbued with, uh, yeah, like what it means to be indigenous in a landscape that is deeply colonial and colonialist policies continue to permeate the fabric of Canadian society and ways in which indigenous people are constantly living under, yeah, this attack and this, this challenging of their traditional ways of of learning and living and existing in the world. So he just makes space for indigenous joy and resilience and togetherness in a way that just really spoke to me. And it was just so beautiful. Like it was like a heart offering. This book is just like his heart on a platter and he's just like, be delicate with it and like experience the warmth and the joy and the beauty of what I have to say <laughs> and these beautiful characters that I've brought to life. Like. 
I don't know how else to describe it other than just, yeah, like a heart offering. I think this is probably like up there with my favorite book this year, to be honest. Like, ah, oh, so many lines that I underlined too. Like, and, and like the way that he writes and these relationships are so subtle, but so deep. You know what I mean? Like there's just these lines or these little like moments that he manages to capture the like perfect essence of what it's like to love someone or to care for somebody and that like melancholy and that, yeah, just that very human emotion and what it's like to exist in the world with somebody else and, and longing and making sense of the world with somebody else. I don't know, like, ugh, it's just absolutely beautiful. Please, 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 out of all the books that I'm gonna talk about, please just go to the library or buy this. It's just absolutely stunning stunning the writing like i said just doesn't miss it's so good every story it's just like mm, i love you characters i wish i could stay with you longer i wish there were more pages and i wish all the characters in this story collection had like their own book you know what i mean it's it's that good like truly truly get your get your hands on this and let me know if you feel the same and if you don't, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah, I love him. Billy Ray Belcourt truly really can do no wrong. And I'm just obsessed. I also kind of wish I hadn't read this as fast as I did. I think I read this in like a day and a half. I just spent the whole day at the beach just like reading and being like so consumed and being like, I love this. I love love. I love reading about it. Like I just love experiencing how earnest and just beautiful uh these people are because they feel so real you know i feel like parts of billy ray belcourt are just like sprinkled throughout all these characters at least that's what i'm obviously that's like i'm imposing myself on somebody else but that's how it reads to me and that's the story i'm telling myself uh so anyway yeah absolutely love this i have nothing but amazing things to say about it and i want everybody to read it so tell me if you have read it already. So yeah, that was that. Um, and then I, oh, hold on. I have to go get it actually. I almost forgot about this one. In like literally two sittings, I read Dogs of Summer. And maybe because I just finished this today, I don't know how to feel about it. Like I, I'm not gonna come on here and be like, I freaking loved it, it was so good. <laughs> Like there are parts of it that I did like, um, the rawness and like crass nature of writing about like coming into your sexuality and like the first time you masturbate <laughs> and like bodily functions and yeah, just like exploring your sexuality. I freaking love that. Oh, I should probably say the story is about two 10 or 11 year old girls living in the Car Las Islas Canarias. I don't know how to say that in English, the Car Carini Island, no. Mary? cannery i have no idea i'm gonna leave the spanish version for all of you but anyways uh yeah these two girls living on this island in spain and they sort of remind me of the gals from my brilliant friend in the sense that there's like a clear like power imbalance like there's one friend who deeply admires and like wants to be the other friend and the story is written from the perspective of the friend who's infatuated with the other friend uh, so yeah, we've got like that type of dynamic, girlhood, coming into your sexuality, like I said, and navigating a sticky summer full of a lot of feels and pent up emotions. And yeah, I did enjoy it, but I'm curious what the lasting effect of this reading experience will be because I don't know, I kind of wanted more from it. Like when I finished, I thought to myself, what did I get out of this? Apart from like a funny, sorry, a couple like humorous moments. Like, I don't know, I don't know. So I'm gonna sit with this. I thought I would enjoy it a lot more. And like, it definitely wasn't a bad reading experience by any means, but yeah, I don't know. I kind of wanted a little bit more, like I said, but I'm gonna let this just like marinate for a beat and then come back to you with more thoughts when I have had more time to sit with it because I literally just finished it this morning. But yeah, it didn't blow me away, at least not yet. But sometimes I, anyway, I'll leave it there. <laughs> I'm not gonna ramble. Um, okay, then from the library, I picked up 
as we have always done by Leanne Batasamasage Simpson, Indigenous Freedom Through Radical Resistance, in part because of the work that I'm doing. Uh, I love Leanne Batasamasage Simpson. They wrote Nupaming, A Cure for White Ladies, which I think about often, and it's one of the most unique books I've ever read, so highly recommend you to check it out. But anyways, yeah, this is uh, their work of nonfiction. And I, yeah, I got it for work, like I said, because I'm working in uh, reconciling Crown Legal Frameworks with Indigenous Law. And Leanne is just such an expert in talking about uh, Indigenous identity and land-based learning and decolonizing the Canadian landscape. And I just love their work. And I thought, you know what? I've consumed a lot of their um, essays lately. So I saw this at my local library and I thought, cha-ching. Perfect. So yeah, looking forward to that. Um, then I got Last Woman, which I talked about in my last video, and I read a couple stories and they're not blowing me away. <laughs> I had hyped this up so hard. Uh, I don't know why, like I just thought this was going to be like the most revelatory, like short story reading experience ever. Um, but it hasn't been, but you know what? We're two stories in, maybe not all stories need to be bangers. Also, I just got off of my like Billy Ray Belcourt high. So like, it makes sense that now, like I just have such high expectations because that book was just like such an immense like moment of like effervescence for me. And this is just not that, but it's okay. I shouldn't be comparing so much. And this probably has its own magic going for it. So yeah, like I said, I'm just two stories in. So I need to just like relax and not be such a judgy B-I-T-C-A-H. So yeah, that's all I'll say that maybe I had higher expectations going into this and it's not like completely blowing me away, but I still have hope, you know, I still have hope. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm currently reading. Uh, also from the bookstore that I got the last time I was there is uh, this arc. Um, suggested in the stars by Yoko Tawada because I I don't know what it was but like four people at the bookstore that day spoke about this author super highly and then we have like a bunch of arcs um, essentially like collecting dust in the back and I saw this and I thought you know what maybe this is the universe telling me that I need to read this author because I didn't know anything about them uh, but now I'm now I'm intrigued and I'm not gonna redo the back because I don't want to embarrass myself today <laughs> <laughs> and make you think I'm like freaking illiterate. But anyway, I'm very called to read this. I mean, look at that cover. I really like it. And yeah, I mean, like I said, it came highly, not this one, but the author came like super highly recommended by like four strangers. So there we go. Uh, and then I've also been reading On Power and Ideology by Noam Chomsky. I love Noam Chomsky and this has been a really good read about um, US foreign policy and every page I want to underline all of it and I'm just like nodding my head being like yes yes um and it's crazy because this was published in 1984 I believe yeah 1986 and everything that he talks about is still incredibly relevant like this is not dated at all uh U.S. foreign policy remains as fucked up as ever and uh yeah he just like traces the history uh and focuses on the Latin American context which to me is particularly interesting because I'm Venezuelan so uh yeah 10 out of 10 recommend if you find this at your local used bookstore which I did pick it up because it's great. Also, I think you can access this online, to be honest with you, because they are lectures that he gave in Panama in, like I said, 1986. So I believe those lectures are like publicly available. They just like made it into a book. It's four of them. So yeah, really loving this. And lastly, more law related, but if any of you are interested in Aboriginal law in the context of Canada, shoot me a message on Instagram. I'd love to talk about it. Um, but yeah, I'm also reading Aboriginal Justice and the Charter, Realizing a Culturally Sensitive Interpretation of Legal Rights by David Millward. They are a Cree academic from Alberta. Yeah. So no, Manitoba. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah. And this has been really, really good as well. But again, just like 
more of a legal text, but I thought I'd throw it in there in case any of you are remotely interested in that niche um, intersection of literature and social justice and um, indigenous self-government. So anyway, that is all I have for you. I'm trying to think of any other updates that you would find interesting. I made a peach cake, which I make every year, multiple times in the summer because it's just delicious. Uh, I've gone to the beach a few times. That's why I look a little bit burnt perhaps. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, we'll see each other soon. I hope you're enjoying your summer and your reading lots. And yeah, let me know what I should be reading. Because like I said in my last video, I'm not really tied to that list, okay? So don't hold me to it if by the end of August, I have not made my way through because I don't know. We're, we're all about mood reading in this channel, you know? So seeing where life takes me. Anyway, love you all. See you soon. Bye.